37-year-old Ella Patel, an interior designer, has no interest in listening to other women talk about pregnancy and childbirth. Moreover, such topics evoke a sense of disgust in her. Ella has to make an effort and pretend to be engaged, so as not to appear strange in the eyes of other women. They constantly ask Ella when she and her husband Aiden will have a child. No one seems to believe that Ella genuinely doesn't want children, because family is considered the most important thing. At the moment, Ella is simply enjoying life and doing what she loves. She is happy with Aiden, without a third person. But everyone around her keeps insisting that children are the best thing that can happen in life. Soon Ella visited a doctor at the husband's insistence, as he was concerned that her mother had passed away of breast cancer. Dr. Weber conducted an examination, asking the patient if she was planning to have a child. Ella replied she wasn't ready for that yet. The doctor said that there was no time to waste, as Ella wasn't getting any younger. However, Ella isn't sure she wants to become a mother at all. All women have a biological clock, but could it be that Ella's clock is broken? Ella is proud of what she has achieved in the design field, but perhaps something is missing in her life. Ella fears that one day she will regret not having a child now. Ella and Aiden visited her father, Joseph. Ella prepared a delicious dinner. Joseph is very proud of his son-in-law, who has made a successful career as a doctor, and of his daughter, the only thing that saddens Joseph is the empty places at their table. It would be wrong if their family history ended with Ella. She could no longer endure such conversations and left the table. Ella doesn't know how to make the right decision. In the end Ella decided to go against her instincts and agree to have a child, but Aiden doesn't want his wife to do this against her will. Aiden is happy with her and is ready to accept any decision she makes. Ella continues to think that something is wrong with her and decides to fix it. Earlier, Dr. Weber explained that the problem might be a hormonal imbalance. There is now an innovative treatment method that addresses the issue of women not wanting to give birth. Dr. Weber gave Ella her number in case she decided to go through with it. Ella thought this might be her chance to give Aiden a complete family. She even declined participation in a major project in order to have a baby. Ella chose motherhood and without telling her husband, went to a specialized clinic. The receptionist escorted Ella to a room where she received a hormone injection and was asked to sign a consent form. Dr. Elizabeth Simmons arrived and explained to the patient that the purpose of every living being's life cycle is to reproduce. And if a woman for some reason doesn't want this, then something is wrong with her. It's a disease, just like depression. The goal of the specialized program is to restore a woman's body to its natural state through synthetic hormones and cognitive behavioral therapy. The treatment course lasts 10 days. During this time, Ella will have to stay at the clinic. Ella is skeptical about the treatment program, doubting that in 10 days she could develop a desire to have a child. Nevertheless, she took the medication. In the evening, Ella went to the dining room for dinner. The other patients didn't seem interested in socializing. Before bed, Ella texted her husband, hoping that soon their family would be complete. The next day, she shared her thoughts on childbirth and motherhood with Dr. Simmons. Ella doesn't understand why one should risk their life, especially since childbirth can cause irreparable harm to a woman's health. Dr. Simmons concluded that Ella has a pathological fear of pregnancy. Ella is here to overcome her fear, and that's already half the battle. The most important thing is to acknowledge the problem. The therapy will be useless if they don't figure out the cause of Ella's phobia. Dr. Simmons laid out cards on the table in front of the patient and asked her to describe what she saw. Suddenly the cards in front of Ella's eyes began to come to life. Overcoming the shock, Ella described in detail everything she saw, including a tall woman. The doctor said she would give her assessment the next day and gave the patient a dose of medication. Ella follows the doctor's recommendations precisely. However, she has started to notice strange things. Sometimes Ella sees things that aren't there. Sessions with Dr. Simmons continued. Ella spoke about her childhood and how her grandparents had been through a concentration camp. They survived against all odds. If their family line ends with Ella, it would be quite unfortunate. Ella doesn't want to bring a child into a world where such terrible things, like those that happened in the past during the Holocaust, could still occur. At the end of the session, Dr. Simmons told the patient that her blood test results were quite low, so it was recommended to implant a special device in her body that would produce hormones. This would increase the chances of getting pregnant. Ella asked how long it would last. The doctor replied that the implant would remain in her body permanently. In the evening, Ella couldn't sleep because the excessively loud ticking of the clock was bothering her. Ella removed the batteries from the clock, but the ticking didn't stop. Even when Ella went into the hallway, these sounds continued to follow her. In a panic, Ella ran out of the building, and finally the hallucination released her. A woman smoking a cigarette casually asked Ella what day of her stay it was. They smoked together. It was Ella's fifth day and the last night for this woman. She had the implant placed that morning. Before leaving, the woman told Ella that after the chamber, 
It would be much easier. Ella didn't understand what that meant. Suddenly she saw a tall female silhouette in front of her, just like on the cards earlier. In fear, Ella returned to her bedroom and trying to stay calm, called the husband. Ella just wanted to hear his voice. Suddenly she realized that maybe she was ready to be pregnant. The next day, Dr. Simmons took the patient to a special chamber filled with comfortably warm water. This was supposed to help Ella work through her hidden psychological traumas. Following the doctor's instructions, Ella got into the chamber, and after a few minutes she began to be streamed creepy videos. In desperation, Ella screamed that she wanted to get out. Finally someone opened the lid. Ella was horrified to see the tall woman in front of her. As Ella tried to escape, she slipped and lost consciousness. She woke up on the couch in Dr. Simmons' office, who said that the stronger the reaction after the chamber experience, the better the therapeutic effect. Ella kept repeating that she saw a terrifying woman, but Dr. Simmons assured her that the chamber lid was opened by Nurse Annika, and the surveillance footage confirmed this. Now Ella only wants one thing, to leave this place. Dr. Simmons reminded her of the rule, if a patient opts out of the treatment program, they cannot return. In the end Ella decided to stay. This is her last day, which involves the implant placement. When the nurse handed her Valium, Ella saw a spider instead of the pill and refused to take it. The implant placement turned out to be a rather unpleasant procedure. Before discharging her, Dr. Simmons gave the patient a course of hormones and advised her to wait three weeks before trying to get pregnant. As Ella left the clinic, she felt conflicting emotions. The colors of the world seemed to have dimmed. At one point she saw the tall woman in the middle of the road. Closing her eyes, Ella tried to convince herself that it was just a hallucination. A few seconds later the mirage disappeared, only to reappear beside Ella's car a moment later. She kept driving forward, unaware that there was in fact no woman, but a man whose car had broken down. Ella's mental state continues to deteriorate rapidly. Suddenly she ran out of the car and rushed to a cliff, where she vomited. Returning home, Ella felt a subconscious fear. Their dog was barking at her for some reason. Aiden was very happy that his wife had finally returned. He thought she had been working on her new design project all this time. Ella's behavior had changed drastically. While preparing dinner, she felt the urge to eat raw eggs. Besides everything else, Ella is constantly feeling hot. Panic does not leave her. Despite this, she continues to secretly take hormones without telling her husband. Ella's consciousness is changing, and it is clearly not for the better. She constantly craves raw eggs. Soon the closest friends and family organized a party for Ella in honor of her 38th birthday. Suddenly Ella asked her pregnant friend Shauna for permission to touch her belly. This used to disgust Ella, but now everything has changed. Aiden doesn't recognize his own wife. Suddenly Ella saw a huge spider on Shauna's belly and grabbed a heavy book, but fortunately the others managed to stop her in time. Ella said that she wasn't feeling well and that it would be better for her and Aiden to leave. Ella's attention is becoming more and more scattered, she can't focus on anything. Tasks that used to come easily to her now require enormous effort. Ella received a call from Dr. Simmons, who asked if she was experiencing any negative side effects from taking the hormones. It had been a week since her discharge from the clinic. Afraid of being excluded from the program, Ella lied, saying no. The doctor increased the dosage. While designing the nursery for Shauna, Ella realized that something was seriously wrong with her. Everything was slipping through her fingers, she was haunted by terrifying visions. But Ella kept taking the hormones again and again. Soon Ella received another call from Dr. Simmons. It had been two weeks since her discharge. Ella still didn't want a child, so at the doctor's insistence, it was necessary to continue the hormone treatment. That evening, Ella, her father and Aiden were looking through a family photo album. Seeing her childhood photos, Ella felt unpleasant emotions. Suddenly in one of the photos, she saw that same tall woman. Joseph explained that this was the first photograph of her grandmother after the concentration camp. Ella in a panic kept repeating that the photo scared her. The father in turn accused her of ingratitude. He began tearing up the photos, saying that the daughter had not met his expectations because she had not given him a grandchild. Aiden didn't understand how to behave in this situation. With tears in her eyes, Ella said that she was trying her best. Her craving for raw eggs continued. When Ella couldn't find the bottle of medicine in her bag, she panicked. Realizing that she had left the pills at Shauna's, Ella immediately headed there. When Shauna saw that the walls of her nursery were covered in creepy images, she was horrified and demanded an explanation from Ella. She confessed that she had recently gone to a special place to overcome her fear of motherhood. Shauna genuinely couldn't understand what was so difficult about it. Unlike Ella, Shauna was going to be a single mother, she didn't have a loved one. Therefore Shauna felt that Ella had no right to complain. Suddenly Shauna's water broke. Ella said how wonderful this was. Her behavior was becoming more aggressive and irrational. Ella said she wanted to see the baby. 
The third friend, Fee, pulled Ella away and threw her out of the house. Ella tried to gather her thoughts when suddenly her father called, saying that he had fallen. Since Aiden was in surgery at the time, Ella immediately drove her father's home. For some reason Joseph had called his daughter instead of an ambulance. Ella tried to give her father first aid, but the ticking of the grandfather clock was unbearably loud. Ella ran around the house, covering her ears with her hands, but it didn't help. In a fit of rage, Ella began smashing the clock to pieces. The father begged her to stop, but she couldn't hear anything around her. The delusion released Ella as suddenly as it had overtaken her. When Aiden came home in the morning, he found his wife in a terrible state. Through tears, she told him that she had smashed her grandfather's clock and that the father was now very angry with her. Aiden hugged his wife, trying to comfort her. Unexpectedly she announced that she was ready for a baby. Aiden said they shouldn't do it just to appease her father, but Ella was very insistent, and eventually Aiden gave in. However during the process, he got injured. When Ella grabbed his bag with a first aid kit, she saw the symbol of the fertility clinic and demanded an explanation. Aiden admitted to Ella that he had set everything up so that she would want to go to the clinic and undergo their special therapy program on her own. Aiden didn't want it to seem like he was pressuring his wife, so he asked his colleague, Dr. Weber for help. After throwing away the hormones, Ella intended to return to the clinic. The receptionist couldn't stop Ella, she searched all over the facility for Dr. Elizabeth Simmons. Finally when she found her, she demanded that the implant be removed. Elizabeth said that it was impossible. The doctor also began to convince Ella that deep down, she wanted a child. Bursting into tears, Ella admitted that it was true. Elizabeth hugged her. Since Ella would likely divorce the husband, Elizabeth promised to give her the contacts of an IVF specialist. However after noticing the strange behavior of the other women in the clinic, Ella came to her senses. The reluctance to bear the burden of motherhood doesn't make them all incomplete, despite what society tells them. Since Elizabeth refused to remove the implant, Ella intended to do it herself. Suddenly the tall woman appeared before her again, but Ella pushed her away, and the dark figure transformed into Dr. Simmons. After removing the implant, Ella began to see the world in color again. The police had already arrived. Ella tried to escape in her car. She got a call from Aiden, who called the police after what she had done to her father. In shock, Ella realized that when she had been smashing the clock, it was actually her father. Ella got out of the car, and the police put handcuffs on her. Seizing the moment Ella ran to the cliff and jumped. After some time, Ella regained consciousness at the foot of the cliff near the water, miraculously uninjured. Ella watched as a strange, amphibian-like creature crawled toward her. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.